G'day, welcome back to the channel and we're talking about drones again today. This time we're talking about Google's Wing operation. This is the, the division of Google, which is a division of Alphabet, that has been running drone delivery trials in Australia for nearly two years now. And this week they sent press releases out to the media announcing that they're about to reach some really impressive milestones. And I thought, well, let's take a closer look at this. This has got to be worth a look. Um, now, they're saying that they're about to make their 100,000th delivery by drone. That's a pretty impressive number. That is way ahead of any of their competitors, as far as I'm aware. And they're also saying that they have delivered more products by drone in the first quarter of 2021 than in the entire year of 2020. Now, we've had some COVID issues in 2020, so maybe that's not a particularly um, good comparison, but they're claiming 500% growth. Now, this sounds fantastic. This sounds like, wow, it's really on a roll. What could possibly be wrong with the Google drone delivery service called Wing? So that, as part of this sort of press campaign, they also put a video out. They put a video on their Wing YouTube channel and uh, I thought we'd take a look at that today and have a jolly good laugh because honestly, it's not only funny, but it's tragic. And But before we do that, let's take a look at who Google is. I typed into Google, I said, how big is Google? And of course, Google would know the answer. And it told me Alphabet, Google's parent company, is a tech giant with a 1.4 trillion. Now that's not million, that's not billion, that's trillion dollar market cap, making it the fifth most valuable company by market cap in the world. So this, we're not talking about a mum and pup shop on the corner. We're not talking about Johnny Come Lately. We're talking about the fifth largest corporation in the world. So if they're going to make a video in which they extol the virtues of what they're doing, it's going to be pretty slick. It's going to be accurate. It's going to be finely tuned. It's going to be polished. It's going to be the sort of video you'd expect from a company with a $1.4 trillion market cap. And here it is. They called it two years of drone delivery in Logan, Australia. And the first thing you will notice is the running ads on their channel. They're running ads. This is the Wing channel. It only has 2,350 2, subscribers. That's not very much, is it? And obviously not a, lot of, not a lot of people are interested in Google's Wing operation. But they're the, the running ads? Seriously? A, a corporation worth $1.4 trillion feels the need to generate revenue from its YouTube channel that deals with the drone delivery operation. This is ridiculous. Now, I've been involved in marketing and PR for many, many years. Just one of the many things I've done in my long and illustrious life is marketing and promotion and PR. And if you're trying to get a message out there, if you're trying to get people to, to listen to what you're saying, you do not cloud the issue by putting ads on your channel. Now, sometimes when I've got a really important video on my channels, I don't have ads running. I deliberately do not monetize those videos because I feel it is more important that people get straight to the crux of the matter. The message is delivered to them without any kind of obstruction, without any kind of distraction through advertising. So I don't enable ads on those videos. Apparently, um, Wing, division of Google, division of Alphabet, it thinks we need that money. We need the money. We need the one tenth of a cent or one hundredth of a cent per ad to help pay the bills. Is that true? I don't know. It just it, it paints a kind of strange picture. As a marketing PR person, I scratch my head when I see an ad on this channel. So let's just go ahead and we'll skip the ads because nobody wants to watch a damn ad. Here we go. This is the video and it's talking about two years of drone delivery in Logan, Australia. Now, Google chose Australia because the regulatory climate was uh, quite a bit better than the USA at that time. That's like Amazon chose the UK for the same reason. The, the rules are a bit looser in the UK than in the USA, and the rules were looser in Australia than in America. So it made sense for them to do their testing and development in, an, in a country where the rules were more uh, conducive to that kind of operation. And that's what they did. So here we go. This is the operational launch area of the wing operation in Logan, Queensland, Australia. There's a couple of the wing craft here on the screen. Um, and you notice these QR codes. These are indicating where the drones should land by the look of it. These seem each drone has a unique QR code that it tries to land on so they don't all crash into one place. But there are two of these craft in this video at this point. There's one on the ground down here. It's just sitting there doing nothing. There's another one here which is actually in flight. And if you look underneath it, there is a, a girl um, attaching a package to a tether. Now, the, the way these drones work is that they, they don't, you don't fill them up and then take off. It takes off and hovers, then you attach a small pouch to a tether rope or string or wire which comes down from the drone. Once you've attached that, the drone then lifts that up on a winch and it locks into the body of the drone and it flies off. And in fact, if we look, if I look here at, um, let me just um, find the right thing. Here is 
from Google's submission to the New Zealand government. Here are some specs on that drone. Um, the length 1.3 meters, wingspan 1 meter, weight 5.2 kilograms. Now that's nearly 12 pounds. That is a pretty damn heavy drone. It's not your Mavic Air, it's not your Mavic Mini. It is a heavy piece of kit. Not the sort of thing you'd want falling on your head. It can carry up to 1.2 kilograms and it cruises at 104 kilometers an hour and it can go up to 10 kilometers away, it can deliver up to 10 kilometers away. Also worth noting, there are 12 lift motors. Now this is a fixed wing VTOL, so normally when it's flying in the cruise it's flying as a fixed wing. When it's in the hover it uses these 12 lift motors here to enable it to hover and take off and land vertically. It's all very good common sense, but that's a lot of motors and a lot of propellers. Which actually raises an important question. Now when, when Google made a submission to the New Zealand government as part of its discussion on where the rules and regulations are going in the country, they they put themselves forward as being super safe. That safety is their number one priority. They've got all sorts of mechanisms in these drones. They've got ADS-B in so they can avoid manned aircraft if they come along. They've got safety monitoring systems so that if the drone detects that something's gone wrong with it, it can automatically land safely rather than injuring or falling on people's property. And it, it's, it's super, there's redundancy. That's why they've got those 12 lift motors so that if one of them fails, it'll still hover. There's a lot of work gone into these drones. They are not the kind of drone you can go down to Best Buy or Walmart and and buy off the shelf. They are very expensive bespoke drones designed, developed and built for the sole purpose of delivering products through the wing service. So um, th they've gone to the New Zealand government and said we are super safe, we are the safe people, you know, rely on us for safety. So if I was looking at this video from the point of view of corporate marketing at Wing, at Google or at Alphabet, I would be going mad right now because we've got a 12 pound drone with 12 flesh cleaving propellers hovering directly over a young lady whose only safety protection is a cap and a t-shirt. Now if something goes wrong and that thing falls out of the sky, she will definitely be concussed. I mean 5 kilos or 12 pounds falling on your head from what seems to be about 5 or 6 meters, it's not going to make your day a good one. And then when you're lying unconscious on the ground, these 12 propellers will be doing a, num doing a number on your face. It'll be looking like ground beef, honestly. It is just so dangerous. With our recreational drones, we're not allowed to fly a 250 gram drone over people because of the risk, the danger that if something, however small the chance, if something goes wrong, we could injure somebody. But here we have a 12 pound drone with 12 flesh cleaving propellers hovering over probably a minimum wage worker whose job it is to connect the little tether to this pouch containing the payload. And the, the, the crazy thing is that there are other videos that, they've, that have been published of the wing operation where the man who hooks the payload on does wear a hard hat. This girl should have a hard hat. And if you are trying to make a promotional video to show the world how safe you are, you should have a hard hat on the person operating the payload. Really, seriously, you must do that. So if I was in Google corporate, I would be pulling my hair out and screaming, why are you doing this? We're busy trying to tell governments we're super safe and you're demonstrating our reckless attitude to safety, safety of the operator. But let's move on. So here we go, the payload gets winched up into the drone. Here it goes, wee, And then the drone lip flies up and flies away to the destination. See that? Simple as that. It's a pretty revvy little thing. It's got a lot of power. Those motors must be pretty powerful because it obviously took off very quickly. Once it gets to its destination, it goes back into hover mode. See, it's got these forward thrust motors here. They're not working, it's in hover mode. And the, the package which has been suspended underneath is lowered down to the ground where gets detached. Here we go, we've got some kids, yes, little children, what have they got in their little package? Tim Tam biscuits, woohoo! So this drone has flown up to 10 kilometers to deliver a $3 packet of biscuits, because that's what they cost today in the supermarket when I had a look. $3, you've got an over $10,000 drone, I would suspect, traveling 10 kilometers to deliver one packet of biscuits to a young child. Um, yeah, um, economically, this doesn't make sense. This is the subject of a future video. I will be looking at the economics of the whole drone delivery system and especially Google's wing service. It's just the economics are not there and I'll be proving it with some very simple facts and the evidence that is presented to us on the internet. There we go, $3 packet of biscuits. Little girl's very happy about this. She's over the moon. Woo Remember at that stage, that drone may still be hovering over her head. I mean, she's just grab the box. The drone has dropped it and, and released the little hook. It's probably still hovering over her head and here she is underneath with those that, that five kilo weight and all those propellers hovering over her head. And if you don't believe me, we'll show you later. Um, that's not safe. That's not safe at all. But let's move on. 
here we go. And these are the claims they're making. Real customers, real orders, real drone delivery. And this is all absolutely true. These are real customers. These customers have bought product. And they're real orders, real drone delivery. Yes, but it's not really viable drone delivery, as I'll show you in a future video. But there you go. This is it flying in suburban areas near a person, um, hovering, all those props, dropping the payload down on a string. As you'll see in this video here, there it goes. Payload drops down on a string in someone's backyard back there. Let's have a look here. Let's go back to there. In the backyard, close to the trampoline thing. Now, what happens here if it's a windy day? Well, if the wind's blowing, this package is going to be bouncing around, banging off the sides. And what if the, the tether gets hooked on the trampoline? What happens then? There's a lot of what ifs. That, that obviously, the reason they're conducting these trials, have been doing it for two years, is to, just to find out exactly what does happen. And they must be confident that they've counted all the issues or they wouldn't still be doing it. And there would have been lots of accidents that we would have known about. They would never have hushed up an accident. I'm absolutely sure of that. So there you go, that's the drone delivery in action. And here we go, this is the little uh, container, the little pouch that the products are loaded into for delivery. So there's a very limited size and a very limited weight. According to, to Google's own thing, they said the maximum weight is 1.2 kilos, about three pounds is the maximum weight this drone can carry. So it really limits what you can deliver. And we've seen it can deliver biscuits because they're pretty light, but they're also very cheap. And here we go, here is the operational area in Logan, Queensland. This is the large area they've got. I, I can show you. I will show you in a future thing on Google Earth where this is. And because I noticed the building itself doesn't seem to be sign written in any way. It seems that they've gone to great deal of length not to tell people where this is. I searched on Google. Where is the Google Wing Operational Center in, in Queensland? They, I couldn't find any address for it. So I had to do some homework, but I found out exactly where it is. And I can give you some shots of that. But look at all these little codes here. So it must have a lot of drones involved in this operation. A lot of money would be tied up in those drones. But here again, look, this guy with his safety cap and his steel cap t-shirt under the drone hooked up the package. Again, I would be screaming, screaming at corporate level. I'd be screaming, why are we demonstrating such unsafe operational um, systems with this drone? This is terrible. Um, it's not what you want to portray when you're busy telling the government, with the other hand, we're super safe. And then demonstrating through this video, we don't give a damn about the operation or the safety of our operators. Not very good. Whoa, someone's head should roll for this. And then we go, as I say, it winches it up. And <clears throat> here we go. What else are we delivering? Coffee. There we go. They're delivering coffee from the Extraction Artisan Coffee Store. But now, are they delivering coffee? Now, look, as I say, I've been in marketing and, and PR for many years. And one of the things you, you learn is when people are doing marketing, there's a lot of spin. There's a lot of spin. They often say things which appear to mean one thing. But when you look at the exact semantics of what's said, they actually mean something else. So they've said here in the past year, Logan ordered 10,000 plus hot coffees for delivery by drone. Be very clear that does not mean 10,000 plus hot coffees were delivered. They were only ordered. And if the weather wasn't good enough for drone delivery or if there's some other problem, I dare say a lot of those orders were not fulfilled by drone, but they were ordered. So this is a 100% accurate statement. I would not doubt this in the least, but it doesn't mean all those coffees were delivered. And it's, it's also kind of strange because I thought, well, let's let's see how much it costs to deliver, get a coffee delivered from the artisan of the extraction artisan coffee shop. So I went to the Extraction Artisan Coffee Shop's website, and here it is. Look at this. Ooh, fantastic. There's that little cup you saw. There's no mention that I can find anywhere on this website about getting ordering a coffee and having it delivered by drone. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And this is the shop. This is where they do the coffee. And now I don't see anywhere that a drone can pick anything up here and and no. Because what I've been what I, what it looks like, I'm not 100 percent sure, but it looks very much like all the fulfillment for the drone delivery program, um, the wing system is done from Google's own warehouse. So it's not a case of this thing rips around the coffee shop, picks up the coffee and then drops it off at your house. No, I think that probably Google has a coffee machine. They make the coffee, put it in the bag and send it off that way. And all the other stuff that they're delivering, the bread and the, and the chickens, I think that suppliers must be delivering that to the Google warehouse and they're holding it and then when it's ordered, they drop it in the little pouch and get it sent out. You're not actually getting directly from the business to the customer. It's being warehoused by Google. That's, as I say, I'm not 100% sure, but it very much looks like it. So it's a little bit, they don't really tell you the truth, but they may not be lying. And this is marketing. This is the way marketing works. It's just, it's has always worked that way. It's a case of, of making things look better than they are and covering up the inconvenient facts with words that sound like they mean something different to what they really mean. So there we go. I've, there's been a 10,000 plus coffees ordered for delivery 
by drone, not necessarily delivered. And then you've got 1,200 plus chickens, hot chickens in a bag. These are great. I love those. Fantastic. Um, so hot roast chickens delivered, and those things can be quite heavy. Now remember, this has got a maximum payload capacity of 1.2 kilo, so they're getting to the upper limits of what the drone delivery service will handle. Also, bulk-wise, they only just fit in these little pouches that they're carrying along. But if they've done that, that is fine. Now, the only thing, the downside is that if, I don't think they're dropping around at the at the hot chicken shop and picking up this bag and then dri dropping it off to the customer. I suspect the hot chicken shop delivers these bags to Google's warehouse every morning. Google keeps them hot. And then when they're ordered, they hook them up and send them off. So you need to be 100% sure that Google is storing these things properly. And then you're not going to end up with a bag of hot salmonella because that would ruin your day too. But so far, no one seems to have complained or if they have, they haven't publicized it. <laughs> and here we go. This is the operational center again. Look at all the drones on the ground here. There's heaps of them, heaps of drones on the ground. So there's a lot of drones, only one flying though, only one flying. I don't know if they're doing all those deliveries, they must need a lot of drones. Um, and this was actually the image that enabled me to work out where the, the warehouse was, where this operation was based in uh, Logan. So again, they seem to have been very keen to keep that fairly quiet, not advertising, not putting signage on the building, but then they publish a video which enables someone to find that warehouse, the location of the service, within a matter of minutes using readily online available tools like Google Earth. So again, in corporate level, I'd be going, what the hell are you doing? Giving away our secrets. There we go, drones landed. Now let's see what else we've got here. Oh, 2,700 sushi rolls delivered fresh. That's fine. I'm pretty sure that's the case. But again, they need to be kept refrigerated. So I expect, I don't expect the dropping off at the sushi restaurant, picking them up and dropping them at the customer. Uh, I think they are probably warehousing them. And again, they need to be stored, chilled. Otherwise, you end up with a little packet of salmonella. Not good. Now, this is great. Look at this bread. Everybody needs bread. And that's obviously reaching the limits of the volume capabilities of that little container. Bread's only five, 600 grams for a loaf like that, but volume-wise, it's quite big. But the thing that concerns me most is, what does a loaf of bread cost? Well, I checked this morning on the supermarket website, $1.60 for a loaf of toast bread. <laughs> really, $1.60. So you're using a $10,000 drone, maybe more than $10,000, flying up to 10 kilometers there and 10 kilometers back to deliver something that is worth $1.60. How does that work? And as I say in a future video where I look at the economics of the wing drone delivery service, you'll see it just does not work out. There's no way Google or anyone can make money out of drone delivery like this. And then we come to the worst part of the video, the part that should get somebody fired, in my honest opinion. Here we have a screen that remember, let's go back. Let's just go back. I just want to refresh your mind about how big Google is. It's a $1.4 trillion corporation. $1.4 trillion, the fifth largest corporation in the world. And this is a promotional video to promote the brand of Wing drone delivery to the world. It is being created by Google or commissioned to be created by Google or, or Alphabet. It is about a Alphabet service, you know, the, the Wing service, and it is delivered to your eyes on a Google slash Alphabet platform, which is YouTube. So they've had their finger in every step of the whole thing. So they are ultimately responsible for what you see on your screen. And it is there to reflect the quality, the, the, the standards of the corporation all the way. And even if we go back to safety, now the, one of the key things in safety is attention to detail. You must pay attention to detail because if you think, uh, I can't remember whether I tightened that bolt that holds the rotor head on the helicopter, the Jesus bolt, doesn't matter, it's only one bolt, that kills people. You must pay absolute attention to detail. Attention to detail is one of the crucial factors in any safety management system, any safety plan. So if Google and Wing are busy claiming that they are super safe, they are the safety people to governments around the world, this effectively dismantles their claims. Because if you look carefully at the screen, now remember, Google is just about to do its 100,000th drone delivery, the 100,000th item delivered by drone. So somewhere someone signed off delivered on a docket somewhere 100,000 times. So you think they would know how to spell the word delivered. That is not how you spell the word delivered. Now, yes, I'm a grammar spelling Nazi and I make mistakes myself, but I'm not the fifth largest corporation in the world who has effectively limitless resources to make sure that my promotional videos are dead right. They didn't even use a spell checker. 
Nobody proofed this video. Nobody signed this off and said, this is okay. I accept all the safety violations and the spelling mistakes. Nobody did that. What are they doing? What are they wasting their money on? This is crucial. As a marketing PR person, this kind of thing just makes you scream because all the hard work is ruined in a single missed E. Ah, oh, but as I say, I was here to pull this video apart. I'm doing my best for you, folks. I'm doing my best. Please rank me out of 10 in the comments below. Now, here we go. This is back to safety. Here is a package it's just been dropped from or just released from the drone. It's probably hovering overhead. And I'll show you later on that it is. Here comes a cute little girl. Isn't she lovely? And this is the, the you know, the touchy feely, the, the human interest. They did that. Oh, look at this. This is the, the stuff that marketers love because people go, oh, they go, oh, and pat a kitten. You know, isn't this lovely? Lovely young girl with her mother. They've just got something delivered by Google drone. How wonderful. But You'll see later on, all is not as it seems. She's so happy to have her Google drone delivery, isn't she? Lovely little kid. Fantastic. Um, so let's look a bit further on. Now, here we go. This is really another safety issue. Really? Oh, I don't know. How did this video get through any kind of checks? Did it have any kind of checks? Now, this is obviously someone's having a bit of a party in their backyard. Look, they got all the confetti going there from a balloon burst. The man's holding on to a package that's just been delivered by Google wing drone fantastic so the drone is probably hovering nearby over over somebody's property their car maybe whatever it's winching up its little line because he's just picked up this little bag and he's holding on to some helium balloons with very long strings now just for a moment just for a moment imagine what happens if that slips out of his hand and drifts up into the propellers the 12 meat cleaving propellers of the google wing drone which is hovering yes safe no i would be i mean okay you didn't have to use this image with the obvious safety, the massive safety risks here of this drone in close, prox uh, uh, close proximity to these balloons. Why did you include this shot? This shot is just, no, no one's giving even the slightest thought to safety and the what ifs and the, and the potentials for bad things to happen here. I think the people that made this video don't know a damn thing about drones. They don't know a damn thing. They probably think, oh, if that floated up, then the propellers would just chop the string, there wouldn't be a problem. Or they probably even forgot there would be a drone nearby when they stuck this little bit of video in the in the main video this oh, it's just, i don't know how how do they do this are my standards too high i don't know so now we have dog food delivered by drone these are some some shots there's one in here that's quite important maybe a couple there a kid um and there's the family again with their still oh look hey there's only one balloon left some of those balloons did escape <laughs> And there's these little wing box, isn't it? So, yeah, not good. Not good at all. And there's the little girl saying, look, a drone. And here's the man picking up one of his wing boxes there. Fantastic. And he, look, you can even use them as a hat. How cool is that? You should wear that when you're loading up the drone in case it falls on your head, I suppose. But look at that. Fantastic. What? That's fun. Everybody loves that. Um, whoop, let's go back because this is what I wanted to show you. No, not that one. Which one is it? Let's go back further. No, it's feel forward a bit. Somewhere in here, let me just try and catch it. Oh, that was it. Damn, missed again. There's a bit of lag on this. Here we go. Remember we showed you that lovely little child before who went out and, and, and picked up the bag with something in it and then was with her mother smiling. Well, I told you that the drone could be hovering overhead. And look, here's the child just about at the bag. There's the drone hovering directly overhead. 5.2 kilos, 12 pounds of drone with 12 meat cleaving props whizzing away and there's the little girl underneath it. This is an accident waiting to happen. What could go wrong? Well, you recall recently I did a video about magpies. In Australia right now, it's a nesting season for magpies. Magpies cause so many attacks every year in Australia because they're very territorial. Now, this is Australia. If there's a gum tree or something nearby and there's a nesting magpie and this thing comes into the vicinity, there is a very good chance the magpie will have a go at it. It'll try and knock it out of the air. And if that little girl's underneath at the time and this thing gets struck out of the air by a magpie, boom, there you go. This is just such a bad situation. They should never have included this picture in this video because it just... You know, this is just safety issues waiting to happen. This is no, no. This is just showing how dangerous the damn Google Wing drone delivery system can be. It is not the goal of this video to make them look bad, but they've done it so very well. Oh, I don't know. And let's go back a bit to that other one there, because I think this shows you also that here we go. The drone's hovering over somebody's driveway. Um, you know, there could be cars going backwards and forwards. It's like, it's, it's hovering in a, we can't hover our tiny recreational drones because they're too dangerous. And we've got this damn thing hovering all over the place in a suburban environment. I don't think it's really such a safe thing to do, but I, I wouldn't have included those shots. 
Again, look, here it is out. It looks like it's dropping it on the footpath. And pedestrians walking past. What are they supposed to do? Oh, I don't know. It's it's just, I've got no clues. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're doing. So there you go. There it is. That's the Google Wing drone and all the dangers that it represents to the people who operate it and the people who order products and the innocent people nearby. That's it. That's from Wing. Now, that's I said I was going to pull this video apart, and I did. I, I would be ashamed if, if I was in charge of PR and and so forth of marketing and this video was released under my watch i would hang my head in shame it delivers all the wrong messages uh, safety is obviously not a consideration the english language yeah we'll just mangle it to suit we don't proofread we're google we're the fifth largest corporation in the world we don't need to proofread stuff my goodness what are you thinking uh, anyway yeah lockdown fever I'm getting cranky. But there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I just wanted to show you how crazy things are. And uh, yeah, I wonder if they'll take this video down. If I was in Google, I would take this video down. I would take it down because it is delivering such a bad message. Governments, the New Zealand government, if they look at this, they're going to go, Google is bullshitting us when they claim that they're all focused on safety because this just demonstrates so many bad safety situations. Some, so many cases where bad things could happen and no, no mitigation strategies are in place. No hard hats, no, no vests, nothing to stop. And, and having children running out under a drone when it's delivering. No, you cannot present that if you're claiming to be safety first. You know you can't do it. Anyway, this is just the first part of a video because next I'm going to be showing you just how ridiculous this whole delivery thing is. I'm going to go through the mess. I'm going to crunch the numbers. I'm going to show you how it can never, ever turn a profit. This will never, ever be a commercially viable business model. Never, ever. And you might think, well, why are, why are Google doing it? Well, I'll explain why they're doing it as well. And Google has no intention of running a commercial drone delivery business. I'll tell you now, it is not even on their radar. They are doing this for a completely different reason, which I'll go into. And let's not forget that Google is well known for creating stuff and then just abandoning it. This site here has a list of just some of the things that 240 things that Google has got involved in and then just ditched. And look, I'll just scroll through so you can see what they're talking about. Google does not commit to things if it don't if they don't make a profit. And there's no way drone delivery will make a profit. Google will be out of this business as soon as it, they've got what they're, they're long game. There's an end game here. And once they've accomplished the end game, they'll be gone. This is a really disingenuous setup. It's not that they're trying to produce a drone delivery service. They have something else in mind, and I'll be covering that. And it is bad for our hobby. And I'm not happy with Google for doing it this way. And there you go. Look, I could scroll here all day. <laughs> These are the things that Google have just tried and, and abandoned. So they will be abandoning drone delivery. Trust me. That's it. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Go down to the commenty bit. Have your say. Tell me what you think. Am I wrong? I could be completely wrong. Do you think this is a fantastic promotional video? Do you think there's no problem with the safety issues that I've raised in this video? Do you think that the English language is dynamic and you can drop vowels when you want to? It does no harm. You tell me. <laughs> and do you think that the fifth largest corporation in the world should never be criticised in this way? Do I not know who they are? And will they have this video taken down as well because it criticises them? We don't know. I take a risk with every video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.